What do all these women behind me have in common? I know what you're thinking. They're all wearing super fashionable clothes, like me. But yes, they're also all Muslim women. What if I told you that I am a Muslim woman? What if I told you that I am one of 900 million Muslim women in the world? Most likely, I don't quite fit in with your image of what a Muslim woman looks like. And that's because we often see the belly dancer, the submissive servant, the terrorist. While the experiences of Muslim women are all unique, the media often gives us just one or two narratives to consume. So how can we allow ourselves to see beyond those singular narratives? Let me tell you my story. Hi, I'm an Egyptian-American 16-year-old junior in high school. I began my life in Egypt. One of my favorite memories was hanging out in the kitchen with my grandmother, Tita, as she showed me how to make kak, an Egyptian dessert made of powdered sugar and dough. I'd go swimming with my other grandmother, Anduda, and hear all about the kids in the computer science class she taught. My family dinners were always super loud. My two aunts would often debate everything, from the newest Turkish soap opera to the latest political development. I didn't quite realize it at the time, but I grew up surrounded by powerful Muslim women who were all empowered, driven, impassioned. Like my aunt, Rul, who calls herself the crazy one and protested in the Arab Spring in 2011. And then the end of my fourth grade year came. My parents sat me down and told me we were moving to Boston. I had visited the U.S. before, but it was always for vacation. Actually, summer camp. But still, I loved summer camp. What was the big deal with moving to Boston? It would be great. And it is. But it has been a transition. The Muslim women I see in Western media are almost always victims of oppression, voiceless and agentless. At school, my friends would ask, is your mother allowed to drive? Ubers asked, where is your veil? And I was happy to answer them. I loved sharing memories of my life in Egypt, explaining what Ramadan meant to me, explaining how no, you can't even drink water when fasting, and no, I'm not getting any thinner while doing it either. I found myself constantly helping people understand what my experience as a Muslim woman was like. And I loved it, because I had been raised to be proud of my culture and my religion. But they were always shocked to hear about my experience because it didn't match up with their preconceived notion of what life for a Muslim girl was like. The more I told people about Muslim women, the more I realized that my friends in Ubers simply had never heard a Muslim woman speak for herself. And so they assumed we couldn't. When in reality, the voices were out there, but nobody knew how to empower and amplify them. Unfortunately, this problem is not new. Last summer, I began researching Princess Fawzeya, a sister of the last king of Egypt and former empress of Iran, who was born in 1921. After visiting archives across the world, I found that the Western media often portrayed her as a political pawn, when in reality, she was working to galvanize women and lift them up across her country. While I know of several Muslim women role models today, I had forgotten that there are plenty in the past. Researching Princess Fawzeya's life reminded me that throughout history, Muslim women have used their platform to create change, even if that change wasn't always at the forefront of their representation in the media. Even today, the portrayal of Muslim women, and by extension, Muslim communities, can be problematic. A 2018 analysis of more than 10,000 news articles in the UK mentioning the word Muslim found that nearly 60 percent of the coverage associated Muslims with negative behavior. I would read news article after news article talking about the oppression of women in Islam. 
And it made me sad to see that this was how Muslim women were being portrayed. It was creating a picture that Muslim women are so different from everybody else. When in reality, there are so many similarities. But I found these portrayals alienating. In the January of 2017, I was sitting in my social studies classroom. That day's discussion was about the recent ISIS terrorist attack on the French newspaper Charlie Hebdo. Prior to the attack, the newspaper had published political cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. We began our discussion, and I remember everyone turned and looked at me. Just me. The only Muslim in our class. The only Muslim in our grade. I didn't really mind until a classmate asked if it were true that you couldn't depict the Prophet Muhammad, and I said, yes, I mean the Hadith. A holy collection of texts in Islam says that one isn't allowed to visually represent the Prophet Muhammad, or any Prophet for that matter. But suddenly, the whole class stared at me as if I myself had just come out as a member of ISIS. Obviously, I wasn't. I was just a sixth grader like the rest of my classmates. Growing up here in the country I now called home, I would continue to experience moments like these. But I decided I couldn't sit back and let these differences grow, because my silence only exasperated the situation. So slowly, I began pushing back against that narrative. Eventually, I came up with the idea for Bantuta. Bantuta means girl for Arabic. And through my Instagram page, Bantuta, I, helped, I hope to connect Muslim women my age with the greater world and vice versa. My experience as a Muslim woman living in the United States has at times felt isolating. I've also felt like my religion was misunderstood or misinterpreted. I've received many questions about why I don't look like the stereotypical Muslim girl. And me being a young Muslim woman, I face a lot of troubles like at school or just like in general, like I get dirty stares. Uh, experience as a Muslim woman in this country has fortunately been very positive. I've always been very lucky to have been surrounded by a lot of people of my faith growing up. And so I've always felt like I belonged and that I have support systems. These stories and the others on Bantuta inspire me. And they remind me that when we come together and share our stories, we can better connect and understand each other. But Bantuta is just the beginning. We need to find even more ways to share our stories by changing the narrative around Muslim women. We can change the way we see our world. I challenge you, the next time you hear the label Muslim woman, Recognize that they are more than just a person behind a veil. They are more similar to you than you think. They have a voice, and they have a say. Perhaps more importantly, we must all use our stories to inspire, to connect, and to motivate. What do all these women behind me have in common? They are a part of our global community just like you and me.